This is your election brief. I'm Arva Kumsen. Join us for the next 20 minutes. We start off with the president, John Mahama, who has branded NPP flag bearer Nana Ekufu Addo as a dictator who is unfit to lead Ghana. Harsh words from the president about his main rival as he campaigns in his home region. Addressing a rally in Bimbaland, the northern region, the NDC flag bearer, who is seeking a second term, says Ghanaians who vote for Nane Kufu Addo would be treading a dangerous path. Watch. It would be a very dangerous thing to hand power over to a party that is not ready. Because the MPP party, as I tell you today, is divided into two. Can bring people together. We are looking for a leader who can unite Ghana. Not a leader who will divide Ghana. If you can't unite your own party, how do you unite a nation? If you can't unite your own party, how do you unite a nation? What we need in Ghana is an understanding president. The era of dictatorship is gone. We are in the era of what is sure. We have seen this government. One of the major assets of this government is peace and stability. If for nothing at all. Well, President Mahama's uh, description of his main rival as a dictator has drawn a swift reaction from the MPP. Spokesperson for Nene Kufuaru, Mustafa Hamid, says the NDC flag bearer is bereft of issues to campaign on. He spoke to Francis Aben earlier on Joy FM's Midday News. Um, it is not correct for a president of a nation to speak um, without evidence. The fact is that this mandate that Akupuado has to lead MPP into the 2016 election is a mandate that was given him by 96% of the party's delegates. Are you following me? So, per the statistics that is there, per the evidence, Akupuado has 96% of the party behind him. 96% is, is not half of 100%. So, first of all, the president has his mathematics wrong. Akupuado is not presiding over uh, uh, half the party, 50% of the party. He has 96%. Number two, the people who contested him in the primaries, for which reason you may even uh, remotely suggest that there was a certain division, are all the leading people in his campaign right now. Everywhere that you have, we have gone, your reporters have followed us. Alan Sherman saying, Adai Nimo, the rest of them, they are on the platforms holding hands. Well, he points to the specific the examples of the national chairman and the general well, secretary well, well, being suspended for dissenting views. I have to be logical and methodical. I don't want to be hit like the president. So let me be methodical and logical so you can see the evidence and judge for yourself. So we take it one by one. I'm answering to the, to the thing about a division of the party into half. I have answered with the statistics, and I have answered with the people who are supposed to be the division following the president. So I'll come to that point. Now, the last point about people um, being suspended from the party. The courts of our land has ruled that what the NPT did was lawful, was just, and it was fair. So the president's persistence in this matter shows that all they were banking on from last year was that there should continue to be some noises and some distraction within the NPP so they can use it as a basis of their campaign. Now that those noises have come, they realize that they don't have a plan B. Now that he doesn't have a plan B, he has to continue harping on it irrespective of the evidence that is available. Well, good luck to him. So uh, spokesperson for Nene Kufuaro, Mustafa Hamid, there. But uh, let's get a quick update on what the president has been doing today on his campaign tour of the northern region. Correspondent uh, Hashmin Mohammed joins us on the line. Hashmin, uh, the president's campaign in the region has been very active. What's he been up to today? He has been to Tatale, and then right now, though, he is in the Zabzugu constituency and he has just taken to the stage to address residents of Zabzibu. A while ago, he announced that uh, the government in the process of seeking a loan facility from the Africa Development Bank to award contracts for work to commence on the Yendi Zabzibu Tatali route, which has been a major concern for the residents of Zabzibu. He is also saying that under the small town water system, he has 
his government has been able to um, expand water delivery to residents of these two major constituencies. That is acceptable and certainly. And those are part of the foundations he's laying for for the development of the area. And there is a need for the, the residents in that particular area to renew his mandate. All right. Many thanks. That's uh, another regional correspondent, Hashmin Mohammed. there. You're watching Election Brief. One person who's been quite busy and active on the campaign trail is the flag bearer of the Progressive People's Party, Dr. Papakwesi Indum. He's been crisscrossing the length and breadth of the country as he seeks the mandate of Ghanaians. But the PPP flag bearer is not restricting his campaign to outdoor rallies. He's taken advantage of social media to drive his campaign message. Leadership gone wrong. And, you know, when you have a young country, and you have the majority of the, of the people are young. Most of our people in Ghana are below the age of 25. And it is important that we establish the concept of, of justness and of discipline. We want to build a just and disciplined society. And, and so when somebody does something wrong, especially when young people, young adults, uh, do something that's terrible, and threaten essentially the lives of, 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 of an essential part of our democracy, you would expect that the president of the land would let matters run their normal, natural course and not seek in any way to mitigate, if you will, the punishment that has been put there. What it does is it says that if you are on my team and you do something wrong, I find a way to get you out of that difficulty, no matter what. And no matter the damage to the entire people, to our democracy, to our governance, and to the moral ability to lead. And so what we are saying uh, is, you know, and, and let me be very clear. I know one of the, the, the people involved here very well. And we have advised him to do the right things before, okay? And so... Now, he made a surprise comeback when he was once again elected as flag bearer of the People's National Convention. And Dr. Edward Mahama uh, is uh, on point to, I mean, he's on, he's on course to ensure that his party is elected as uh, the governing party in 2017. Now, he joins us on the line, hopefully, with some answers to questions that we have for him. Many thanks for your time, uh, Dr. Edward Mahama. Thank you for having me. And welcome to Election Brief. We are grateful for your time. Very little uh, has been heard of your campaign. The last time we spoke to your party chairman, he indicated you're doing a ghetto-to-ghetto -ghetto campaign. Is that the case? Actually, uh, you, remember, you, you, you remember that um, the campaign theme for the PNC for this election season is new beginning, new deal, new force. New beginning, new deal, new force. That's if you can repeat that. Theme. New beginning, new deal, new force. New beginnings because PNC is saying that our government machinery, civil service, public service, is not reacting to the needs of the people. For example, last year, there was an outbreak of meningitis in Sunyani or Brangahafo. It killed 150 people needlessly. I repeat, needlessly. A health service that is reactive to the needs of the people, after five cases, would have vaccinated the people and all the others would not have died. If you write a letter to any you know, of our government machine, uh, ministries or contractors finish their contract and they take their uh, uh, certificates to the Minister of Finance, they have to chase and chase and chase after them. The government is very in, 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 inactive to what the needs of the people are. So, new beginnings, we are saying that we want to pick the uh, problems of Ghana by 
reorganizing the civil service, the public service, the education service, the health service to be responsive to the needs of the people of Ghana. So, That's Doc, how, 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 in what shape or form is your campaign taking? Well, the campaign is on the message, and I'm just giving you the message. I'm talking about uh, how you're rolling out your campaign. Are you, yes, are you just new force, doing a face-to-face, door-to-door, or listen, rallies? Listen, listen. No, the new force we are talking about are 18 to 35-year-old Ghanaians. They, those are our target group. And we are meeting them in groups of uh, maybe 18, 12, 13, you know, 13 to 18 groups of, we call them cells. Cells. They are not large groups, but small, small groups. Maybe mm -hmm. the largest I have had to deal with is about 25 people. But these are small, small groups that uh, we are dealing with so that they can understand my message and know why they are forming the new force to get away the NDC and the MPP and bring in a new way of doing things in Ghana. I see. And what's been the response uh, from the people that you, are, you have specifically targeted? The 18 to 35 year olds, you know, they are the people that are hurt most by unemployment. They are the people that are hurt most by high rent. They finish university, they don't have uh, a job, they can't even rent a place. The other day I was at Lagon, and the porters were telling me that a new phenomenon is developing in the university. Those who have finished university do not want to go home because they have no uh, jobs, and they don't want to go and stay with their parents. So basically, they, 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 they remain in the university, and the university authorities are trying to, to drive them out. So you talk about unemployment, um, and yeah. I, we know that it's going to be a key driving issue this, uh, these, uh, during the campaign. So what yeah. are you proposing to this target group that you speak of in terms of well, how you are going to address unemployment? Yes, we're looking at agro-based industry. We are trying to... Uh, uh, I said when I was 27, I did a rice farm, and from my rice farm, I sent myself to America to become a specialist at the age of 27. So we want to help the young people to go into agriculture and agro-based industry so that they can get a job for themselves. Also, but but the interest by young that, people in, uh, in the agro-based industry is very low. How are you going to get them to, you know, to raise their interest uh, or to get them to be interested in this, this, this field, the agro-based industry you talk of? If you have a program, just as uh, Achampong had a program, I was already a doctor. I didn't have to go into farming, but Achampong had a program called Operation Feed Yourself. And so I took advantage of that program because I was working in northern Ghana, and those days it took one month for daily graphic of today to get to Nalero where I was. So if I was waiting for government scholarship, I would still be here without specializing. So I decided to take advantage of government program Operation Feed Yourself to do a rice farm, and to sell the rice to give myself a scholarship, which is what I did. So if there is a government program that uh, entices young people, I'm sure they will go into it. In fact, next week I'm visiting a farm of a young lady. She's only 25, and she has a farm in the Adwajiri area. And I'm going to visit it and use it as an example of young people going into farming. When I'm going, I'll invite Joy to come along with me. All right, let's move away from farming and, and talk about um, the issue, this controversial issue of the release of the <laughs> Munti Trio. Now, that, you're on record you coming, as saying, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> you're on record as saying that you're disappointed in President Mahama for releasing the three men. Why is that? Actually, the president, it is his prerogative, you know. He has all the powers to do what he did. I'm just saying that I would not have done that considering, considering the occasion on which these young people uh, threatened the judges. We were celebrating the Matthias Day. If you know what was the Matthias Day, it was a sad day for Ghana when judges were abducted from their homes in the middle of the night and slaughtered and burned. And I'm saying that when the judges have no protection, they are unable to deliver justice to the people of Ghana. 
So on the occasion of that celebration, for people to threaten judges again is a very serious offense in my book. And if I were the president, I would not pardon them. If I were the president, I would rather pardon those who are sitting in jail, remand custody. They haven't been sentenced, but they've been there for years, five years, some of them, ten years, some of them. Dr. Mahama, your yeah. position differs from that of your party chairman, uh, Bernard Mona, who actually welcomed the president's decision. He described it as compassionate. So those are two contrary positions. Tell us, what is the party's position? What is the PNC's position? It, 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 you, you, you just said it. Uh, the general secretary released, released a statement. And I the statement is what I'm talking about. That's the party's position. Ben Almuna is an individual in the party. He can take a personal position. And we don't, we don't fight one another. Just like I said, if I were president, I wouldn't do what uh, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama has done. And he's the president. He's done what he wants to do. But I have liberty to criticize it. I'm criticizing it. All right. Okay. Thank you. So thank, thank you very you. much. That's uh, All right. the okay. flag bearer of the uh, People's National Congre uh, Congress. That's uh, Dr. Edward Mahama. Bit of a tongue twister there. <laughs> You're watching Election Brief. I'm Arba Kumsi. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now, the opposition New Patriotic Party and 15 other political parties have fallen foul of the law, the political party's law, that is. And we're talking about the legislation that requires them to submit their financial statements to the Electoral Commission for scrutiny. But three clear months after the Commission's deadline for them to do so expired, the parties are yet to furnish the EC with their statement. Raymond Aqua of our political desk has been doing some digging and he joins me in the studio. Raymond, hi. Very well. First, tell us why it's legally required uh, of these parties to submit their financial statements. So in 2000, we passed a law, the Political Parties Act. This particular act in Section 21 1B stipulates clearly that just after the 1st of December, the parties have six clear months to submit their audited accounts, one, financial statements, two, and also all the sources of their funding for the preceding year. So all these political parties are supposed to do so before the deadline given by the EC. For the year 2015, coming into this particular year, the EC gave the 31st of May as the deadline, after back and forth as to whether they really want to do so or they wouldn't want to do so. Okay, so we know that uh, so far only seven out of the 25 registered political parties have fully complied with this regulation. Tell us which uh, parties have actually complied with the law. So we know the NDC, National Democratic Congress, the governing party. We know the Independent People's Party, IPP. The IPP? Yes, the United Reform Party, ULP. Mm -hmm. The National Democratic Party, that is Nana Kone Dwight Maronis' party. Okay. Then the Great Consolidated People's Party have also submitted their list. And these are mainly the political parties who are within the main frame. There are some who have submitted, but not all, because we're talking about from 2012 mm -hmm. to 2015. 15. Right. And the, some of the parties, like the Convention People's Party, actually have submitted three of these reports. That is for 2012, 2013, and 2015, leaving out 2014. Okay. The Progressive People's Party, too, has submitted two of these reports, and that's actually for 2012 and 2015, leaving out 2013 and 2014. Interesting. But it's surprising that uh, the MPP has not submitted its financial statements because um, we're made to understand earlier, we're given the impression by some officials of the party that they had done so. So apart from the MPP, uh, which are the other defaulting parties? So if you look at a party like the People's National Convention, whose leader you just spoke to, actually they've not submitted any of them, just like the NPP. Mm -hmm. Another party that is the Ghana Freedom Party, Madame Ekwadonko's party, mm -hmm. has also not submitted a single report since 2012. No surprise now, there, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> the, well, parties like the Ghana Democratic Republican Party yeah. has also not submitted any. Now, the Democratic People's Party, Freedom Party, actually has not submitted any too. Now, the National Reform Party and the Ghana National Party, the United Renaissance Party, 
the New Vision Party, the United Love Party, and the Yes People's Party are the other political parties who have not submitted a single report since 2012. Now, very quickly, I know that you uh, took the opportunity to ask the EC chair, uh, Charlotte, to say about this when she met editors yesterday. Mm. What did she say? She said that clearly they asked them to submit their list. They have seen some of them submit their list. They are yet to check and verify whether indeed it's the true reflection of their accounts. But their hands are too full to go around chasing these political parties to bring their reports. So let's hear from her now. The political parties, I don't think we said we were deferring. What we said was that we have requested Many political parties have brought financial statements. They've brought a list of their offices and their offices around the country. We now need to um, verify the information that they have given. But we also have to prioritize the work we're doing. We can't stop election-related activities and focus on that. So we never said the commission was deferring. We just said because of the election year activities, which always have to be paramount, it's not exactly a priority at the moment, but as time permits, we are working on it because we, we are also depending on the same district um, offices around the country to go and verify all those details and check and make sure that the details we've been given are correct. But the same district officers have to um, superintend limited registration, continuous voter registration, training of election officials, um, registration of prisoners. It's a lot of work. And so we also have to get our priorities right. After this, we're now going to start looking at filing of nominations, recruitment of um, returning officers and election staff. So there's a lot going on, and it's not exactly a priority at the moment. Electoral Commission Chairperson Charlotte will say there. That's our show for today. I'm Arba Kumsen. Election Brief returns same time tomorrow. Yeah.